Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so I haven't made one of these uh, in a while, fun challenging integrals, but yeah, part 12 here. And um, this time we're looking at a problem from the MIT Integration B 2017 qualifying exam, and it was question 12 on there. All right, uh, so to start, uh, we're gonna pretend like these limits of integration are not there and just work on the integral, and then uh, we'll remember our limits of integration when we're ready to evaluate. So uh, first, let's rewrite the integral in a slightly more uh, useful way. Um, which is to write dx divided by, and then dx divided by, and um, it's gonna need a square root in the denominator. So square root of what? Well, look here, this is um, one times x, that's uh, x minus x squared, right? So what we have inside the square root in the given problem is the same as x minus x squared, which I can write if I so chose is minus x squared plus x. So we're gonna need to write this in here, and I'm gonna write it like this, which is I'm gonna write it as minus and then parenthesis x squared and then minus x. Now, if I close the parenthesis, this here is the same as this here, and therefore the same as that there. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, but I'm not gonna close the parenthesis there, I'm gonna add a quarter. Um, and I wanna add a quarter because then this uh, here will be a binomial square. Uh, but I technically actually didn't add a quarter, I subtracted a quarter because of the minus sign in front of the parenthesis. So I subtracted a quarter. And so then in here now, I, I have something different from this and uh, they're different by a negative quarter, right? So to make up for that, I'm gonna add a quarter and I'm gonna add a quarter in front. And so that, so that now this here is the same as that. It's just like a weird rewriting of it, right? Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, if we simplify this here, it will uh, change into it will change into this, and therefore be the same as that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. You get it. You get it. All right. Now what we're gonna do is uh, work on uh, this quadratic here uh, that I said is a binomial square, um, and we see that first that quadratic can be written as uh, x minus one half o squared, which in turn can be rewritten. Um, as um, 2x minus 1 uh, over 2 uh, o squared, which in turn can be written as uh, 2x minus 1 squared over 4. And I really like this version of this here. And the reason is now uh, we have a denominator of 4 here, which will make it easy to uh, combine with that guy. Yeah, okay, cool. So now we come down here and we say, hey, uh, our integral has now um, changed to this, which is dx uh, divided by, and it's gonna be divided by what? Divided by, we're still gonna need a square root, so um, uh, square root of what? Square root of, uh, it's gonna be one, right, from there, and then minus, and this is the same minus sign as that, and this here is the same as this, so I could write the numerator first. Uh, uh, and so that's uh, 2x minus 1 squared. And then I'll have uh, all of this divided by uh, 4. Um, and notice that all of this stuff is inside the square root. But I could take out the 4 outside of the square root. And I could uh, make that uh, clearly visible by like writing it all the way down here. But remember, it's still inside the integral. But yeah, when I take it out the square root, it'll turn into a two. Then now I have dx divided by this fraction here, which is the same as multiplying dx by the reciprocal of this fraction here, yeah? So uh, when we do that, then the two goes upstairs. But then we know that we could write it in front of the integral, so let's just do that. So there it is, so there's a two here, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, what are we gonna do from here? Well, we know that when we have a square root and then we have one minus something squared inside the square root, that sine, sine theta, is a useful substitution. And it's called trig substitution, right? And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Uh, we're gonna say that uh, 2x minus one is equal to um, sine theta. And when we do, uh, this inside of the square root will turn into one minus sine squared theta. And because uh, we paid attention in trig, we know that this is the same as cosine squared theta. So this whole inside of the square root turns into cosine squared theta. So when we take the square root of it, it just turns into cosine theta. How nice, right? So let's keep uh, this reminder of our substitution. 
But yeah, we just said the entire denominator changes simply to um, cosine uh, theta. So that's really nice. That's more than I had hoped for. Okay, so let's replace it all uh, with um, just cosine theta. How nice, right? Now, uh, we need to replace dx into something about d theta. And this is our translation between x and theta. So we come back here and take the derivative on both sides. So when we do on the left side, we'll have to write 2 times dx. And then on the right side, we'll have to write uh, the derivative of sine is uh, cosine theta and then d theta, right? Okay, so using this, it's clear that uh, dx is 1 half. So dx is equal to 1 half of uh, cosine theta d theta, right? And so knowing this, what we can do is we can take uh, dx, which I just said is one half of cosine theta uh, d theta. So um, actually, I need to make room first, right? So get rid of this. And so we can bring this guy over here. Um, it's not very carefully written, but uh, I'm going to cross it out anyway, so it won't matter. Because this one half and that two cancel. And this cosine theta and that cosine theta cancel. And how nice is this? Because our entire integral now reduces to the integral of d theta, and this is simply equal to theta, right? But remember, we had limits of integration. So uh, if you want to evaluate uh, in this form while you have theta as the answer to the integral, you can. You could just use our translation and plug in 0 for x here. And when you do, you're going to get negative 1 is equal to uh, sine of theta, uh, which means that theta will have to equal sine inverse of uh, sine inverse of negative 1, which is equal to negative pi over 2. Um, so you could like now put the limits of integration, well, or take them into account and evaluate and evaluate where evaluate now zeros turned into um, negative pi over 2. And um, you could see very easily that 1 is going to turn into pi over 2, um, so our answer is going to be uh, pi over 2, uh, pi over 2 minus uh, negative pi over 2, uh, also known as the full pi, right? Uh, so minus uh, negative pi over 2, which is pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is a full pi. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so you could do it this way, or um, at this step where, um, you know, I wrote this, you could have like rewinded your life and gotten back to this place uh, if you could do that and again call on our translation right right there and so based on our translation it means that theta is equal to sine inverse uh, also known as arc sine sine inverse of 2x minus 1 so you could say that this is equal to uh, sine inverse of 2x minus 1 i'll save myself some writing and just like uh, move this uh, so right there yeah you could say that and now you could just use your good old uh, limits of integration uh, 0 and 1 now notice that uh, by the time you plug in 1 and 0 uh, you will know that it's the same thing as going uh, with the theta values that we had earlier so um, not really much more efficient in any way all right cool so I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching and there will be more to come yeah all right take care